In fact, Einstein begins to realize that he needs a non-Euclidean geometry to be able to advance his theory of general relativity. What's an example of a non-Euclidean geometry? Well, imagine you have a globe like this one, and I were to draw a triangle on it. And my triangle goes from the North Pole to the equator, along the equator, and then back up a longitudinal line to the North Pole. This is a nice triangle here. In fact, we can see that it's got a right angle over here, a right angle, because all longitudinal lines are perpendicular to the equator, and a right angle at the top, at the North Pole, because I've taken a quarter of the globe. So here I have a triangle with three straight lines, equator, longitudinal line, longitudinal line. The sum of their angles here is 90 plus 90 plus 90, or 270. That's quite different from what you would expect from Euclidean geometry, where the sum of angles in a triangle always add up to 180. So in non-Euclidean geometry, you have these strange new relations. On surfaces that aren't flat, for example, you see a different value of pi, different value of the circumference to the diameter, a different value of the sum of the triangles, parallel lines. These two lines here are both parallel in the sense that they're both perpendicular to the same line, but they meet. In fact, they meet twice. They'll meet again at the South Pole. So all sorts of things are different in non-Euclidean geometry. But Einstein found by adapting the new mathematics of non-Euclidean geometry that had been developed in the 19th century, he was able to show a new way of doing physics.